really excited today. We're going to do a carburetta synchronization. So, so far I've lifted up the tank uh, and I've taken the air box off the top. I've done a separate video on how to remove the air box already. So if you're not sure, go and check that out. So now we can see the exposed throttle bodies. And from when we did the lubrication on the um, accelerator, there you go, you can see now those cables are flowing really freely, which is fantastic. What's going to be really important though, is I'm going to put some uh, blue gloves over this, just so that nothing falls inside here, because if you get du dust, grit, a screw, anything in these parts, it's really bad news for your engine. So I'm going to get those protected and covered first so, off. Carburetor synchronisation is the idea that the carburetors pass the same amount of fuel and air mixture to each of the two cylinders. Um, and we're going to make sure that this is the case by measuring the vacuum pressure off the front and rear of it. If the carburetors are out of synchronisation, then it just means you can use a bit more fuel, the engine might run a little bit hotter, um, and the throttle response might not be quite as good as it, as it could be, and the bike might vibrate a little bit more. So it's just one of those uh, good to check um, and get sync and do as part of your maintenance. I'm going to let the bike warm up a bit. going to have it about... got a set of vacuum gauges we're just going to be using the two because it's a twin cylinder if you had a, a four cylinder of course you could use all four of the gauges so what we've got here is the carburetor synchronization screw so that's what we're going to use to adjust while we're running the first part we're going to take off the vacuum to the fuel solenoid here so just that pipe just removes and then we're going to plug straight into All of these taps are all open. And then on the front side, this bike already has, which is pretty awesome, a little extension shoe, which just has a stopper in the top. So the Allen bolt that's in the top has now been undone. So you can either use tubes or you can use inline valves. Just make sure if you are using the inline valves that they're open, so it doesn't interfere with the readings at all. So. It's nice and open, fantastic. So now we just need to put the gauges. Excellent, where we can see them. And then the idea between these then is that these will read the same and then it'll show they've got the same vacuum suction and that the carburetors are working in synchronization together. So once we start the bike, the needles are gonna flutter around quite dramatically. So then what will happen is by adjusting these points here, um, we'll just stop the fluttering like this and it will make it a lot easier to get the readings to be the same. Before we start, this point here needs a very small vacuum on it. It's only one to two PSI, just a small vacuum just to make sure the fuel runs through. Okay, so that's now got a small vacuum. We're just gonna leave that out of the way. Excellent, now we'll put the gauges up where we can see it. So now all that's left is to put the air box back on, uh, put the petrol pack 
tank back down, put the seat back on and then put all the side fairings back on as well. If, because I had this tube here that went to the front, that made the job a lot easier. If I hadn't have had that, still would have been doable, just following this tube down. Where it goes into there. So again, would have just meant moving the radiator forward and accessing that point. You can see where the pipe's moving into there um, to attach the vacuum hose to. Having this small piece of hose, which is just going to tuck in here, ready for the next time I need to do it, that's made the job so much more straightforward.